Anytime I'm getting a drum sound, I really like to start with the overhead mics first. My choice in overheads is based on the sound of the band, the sound of the cymbals, sort of the configuration of the drum set, and what the ultimate goal is of the project. And whereas this project, the goal is versatility. So I've actually set up two sets of overheads here. I have a pair of the SE Microphones RN17 uh, small diaphragm condensers overhead in an ORTF configuration, just sort of capturing a full picture of the kit. But these are mics that are really great at, at capturing detailed high frequency stuff. So you can probably use those mostly for capturing cymbals, but the drums sound great in them too. If I want to go for a darker, drier sound where I'm capturing the entire drum set in the overheads, then I also have this spaced pair of Coles microphones. The Coles microphones are ribbon mics, which are figure eight patterns. It's capturing the sound below, which, you know, these two floor toms, for example, are below this Coles here, as well as some reflections off the ceiling from the backside of the mic. But if the null of the mic, which is around the edge, is rejecting stuff from the sides. So I've got a really nice, clear stereo image here. I'm not getting a ton of hi-hat in, in the um, floor tom side overheads. And the same is true with the overheads that's above the hi-hats, rack toms, and snare. It's mostly capturing that side of the kit and not the floor tom side. So you will hear the snare panned in these overheads, but it's a nice, realistic uh, stereo picture of the drum set. And I think you could use just these two mics and a little bit of bass drum mic for an entire drum sound for certain songs. In the bass drum, I have my all-time favorite bass drum microphone, the Shure Beta 91A. It does have a, um, a mid-cut switch on it. I've chosen not to use this just for maximum versatility. We can apply mid-cut to it after the fact if we need to. On the outside of the drum, there is a really interesting dynamic figure eight mic uh, made by Byron Dynamic called the M380. And it's the preferred bass drum mic here at Electrical Audio. So trying to take a little bit of their vibe, a little bit of my vibe and bring it all together to make what I think will be the ultimate drum sample library. So on snare drum, we have two microphones. On the top, there's a Heil PR30, which is one of my all time favorite snare mics. And also one of my favorite guitar mics, by the way. It is a very detailed dynamic cardioid microphone. And it's great at handling really loud signals like a snare drum. It's got a little bit of an upper mid range spike, which adds a nice crack to the snare drum, but it also has really great low frequency um, reproduction and it's really super fast. And that's what I love about it most is that it, it captures all the transients of the snare drum. Underneath the snare drum, we have one of my favorite um, bottom snare mics, a Sennheiser MD441, which is a hypercardioid dynamic. It's nice using that in a recorded scenario because it doesn't have a lot of bleed from like the hi-hat or the bass drum or the rack tom. So it's a really good choice for bottom snare. We're at Electrical Audio, so of course we're using the Josephson E22S on toms, which is like the Albini signature mic. And I also have four of these in my own studio and I love them. And as soon as I got those, I was, I was done searching for tom mics. It's like, it's the tom mic for me. Um, and I pretty much use it in any situation when recording toms. So I've got um, all four toms on this kit, uh, mic both from the top and from the bottom. I find that miking the toms from the bottom just gives it a little bit more three-dimensionality. I, I tend to put the bottom mics about six to 10 dB below the top mics. It's just in there for a little extra presence, a little extra throatiness. There's some uh, 451s, spot miking the hi-hat and the ride just to get a little bit of extra presence and detail on those. I'm miking them from the underside so that I'm not getting a lot of bleed from the other cymbals or, or drums. So for maximum versatility of the sample library, we set up the drums in the smallest live room at Electrical called Kentucky, which is right on the other side of the control room. It's, it's, um, it's a little bit smaller than the live room at God City, but the walls are made of adobe brick, which is, um, it sounds a lot different than regular, regular brick. It actually doesn't have any resonance to it at all. It's like completely dead and soft sounding brick. So the room has reflections, but the, they're just like warm, really ear pleasing reflections, not like the harsh stuff that's commonly associated with masonry. So the Kentucky room sounds really awesome for close mics. It's really a lot of control of the drums and they're really directional and 
um, you can really feel the, the full impact of all the transients of the drum in that room in the close mics. We did set up room mics in Kentucky as well, a, a pair of spaced on the mics on the floor in conjunction with a ribbon mic right in the center of the kit. And that room sounds really nice on its own. But if you want a little bit of bigger sound, we actually kept the doors between Kentucky and center field where I'm standing now wide open. And we put this incredible Calrex sound field mic out in the live room to capture the full volume of the room. This microphone has, I believe, four capsules that are all aimed in different directions and its own dedicated mic preamp that allows you to control the blend of all the capsules. So you can actually electrically re-aim the mic to face forward, face back, face up, face down. It's really, it's really neat. What we decided to do was a microphone that, um, its neutral position is sort of like omni, just captures everything around it. And what we ended up deciding to do was to go a little bit towards the back side of the room in that. So we're getting just this big, expansive, warm, ambient space out in this large Adobe room here. In addition to the tight, warm ambience of Kentucky and the large, warm ambience from center field, we also captured the really bright, explosive ambience from the B room at Electrical Audio. And within the Virtual Instruments mix window, you'll be able to blend all three rooms as little or as much as you want.